I needed to cover. The main uh, points from today are uh, make sure that your nutrition is specific to your requirements. On race day, it's all about carbs. Uh, but also, have a bit of a plan in mind so that you can shift things around if your timings change or if you've got a late race as opposed to an early race. The, the main um, issue to consider is basically whether it's going to be a morning start or an afternoon start. If it's early, you're probably going to not have a lot of time to whack on a, a great big carb-heavy breakfast in the morning without feeling a bit uncomfortable in the boat. So then it's all about fueling the night before or recovering from your previous session. If you're competing later on, say two or three, then you might want to be having a, a larger breakfast and then topping up as you go through the day. Does that all make sense? Very simple. But if, yeah, uh, the mo daily monitoring sheet is there for you if you think that's going to be useful. But again, it's just getting into the habit of monitoring yourself, your body weight, how alert you feel, looking at your hydration, and then responding. Oh, yeah, sorry. Um, I was going to ask, what would you recommend? Oh, okay. um, I was going to ask, what would you recommend for, say, if we've got an early test in the morning, yep. like 7 or 7 30? Yep. What would you recommend for eating as I'm not doing just trying to fit that well? Yep. Any suggestions? Any thoughts? Yeah, that's what. Basically, if you're seven minutes of maximum intensity exercise, this is going to be enough to completely deplete your body's glycogen stores. Yeah. So, uh, so what you want to think is that you just need to make sure that you're not completely depleted. So, recovering properly after the last session, low GI will be fine. Um, if you've got like 12 hours, of, uh, 12 hours since the night before to recover, and maybe a little bit of sugar in the morning. Um, there's some good evidence to suggest that sugar actually exerts some of its short-term performance events via like cerebral mechanisms rather than just giving you fuel, like it does like bits of your brain up to do with uh, motivation and trying to keep people pushing on, just so you have either in your mouth, that's all. So, um, yeah, a good, I'm motivated by a good dinner the night before. I wouldn't, myself, if I was doing a, a two-day I wouldn't even have breakfast on that morning because, like I say, it comes back up, I'd probably have some juice, um, and make sure that was fueled properly from the previous session. But everyone is going to have their own um, their own take on it, and is going to have their own things they're comfortable with or not comfortable with. So practice makes you important. Um, and then finally, just before you, um, you get off, just a bit of uh, some suggestions. I'll email these round in terms of things that are quite useful to have in your bag uh, for training, but also for competition. On competition, like we said, it's all about the carbohydrates. So I often make like little protein snacks with my athletes. Uh, getting some whey protein, putting a little, a little bit of fluid, rolling them up with some nuts or seeds or whatever can be quite easy to force to carry around as is a, a, um, a, a jug of whey protein. But powdered milk actually has a higher carbohydrate content because of all the lactose in it, so you're shifting it more towards the carbs. Um, dried fruit, again, is not healthy or unhealthy, but actually you pack a lot of sugar from fruit into a smaller space by drying it and compacting it. Can be very useful to have in your sports bag. Uh, I'll leave these uh, on the way out if anyone wants to have a little go, you can. I'll wash my hands, don't worry. Um, but yeah, these are essential protein balls made with some powdered milk, a little bit of ground almonds, and some dried fruit. Um, think non-perishable, high in carbohydrate. Those kind of things are going to always be useful in your sports bag. All right, nicely done. Thank you very much. <coughs>